So this is my first attempt at uh, animatronics. At the moment it's not animatronic, it's just servo driven and I've got this remote control here set up. But I can make this head move around and then in future I'm going to connect it to a Arduino mini computer thing and program it to do some stuff. So the model is a plastic egg and some joints and a couple of servos there and there and a 3D printed base. And we're going to go through the whole building process now uh, and you can see how it's done. I've used these plastic eggs that I got from eBay. They're just uh, they're supposed to be able to hide treats inside them and then hide them in the garden and send your kids out looking for them. And then this fine tooth saw, I'm going to saw the end off at an angle like that to make it look like a, to make it more of a head, it gives it a chin on the bottom of it. So I sort of struggle away with the saw and then smooth it all out with the file like that. And there you go, there's a sort of head shape to start off with. It's more, it's kind of like a helmet at the moment, isn't it? So for the nose, I've used a wooden bead really carefully, cut it in half and with a dot of hot glue, fastened it into place on the front like that. And you'll notice that I've put a black dot where the nose is. This is from sort of previous experience of, if you don't know where it's going, you end up sticking it all, over, all around the place. Googly eyes, always make, everything looks better with googly eyes. So I have to pick, pick a couple of googly eyes that are the same size. Peel off the backing paper off the back. Try and get the try and use the uh, sticky back ones. They work best. Oh, they're easiest to use. Put it that way. And uh, stick the googly eyes into place. And all of a sudden, it starts to look more like a character. You've got a nose and some eyes, and it and the roundness of the head definitely looks like a character. I'm using a Dremel here with a two mil bit, and I'm drilling holes around the side, around the outside of the model. Again I've marked the place before I've started drilling so that I know where I'm going. So I've drilled these three holes around it and I'm going to fit three connectors that will hold everything together. So this is from my packet of connectors that I bought from eBay. The, the idea of these is that they're, these are from um, racing car, um, remote control racing cars, part of the steering system I think but useful for this. So it's just basically a ball joint in a plastic housing with a bolt holding everything everything together. So take the nut off, fit the bolt through one of the holes. This is the hole at the back of the head. Fasten the nut into place, tighten it up. And there it is. So just to make sure everything's in place, I just sort of nip it up with a pair of pliers. And then I'm just going to do the same I've got two more of these connectors. Uh, I'm just going to do the same on either side of the head and that was going to give me three connectors and that will give me three points of um, movement for the head. And then another two connectors. This time I'm going to fasten them onto the servo arm. Uh, I had to drill out of the hole in the servo arm because it wasn't quite big enough. So I've drilled that out, pop that on there, use my pliers to tighten it up. Uh, and because I've ended up using two pairs of pliers, sort of one on the back and one on the front, just to make sure because the uh, bolt itself was rotating. So I've got a pair of pliers on the back there, another pair of pliers on the front. Tighten it up, and that that will stop everything, stop anything coming undone. And fitting the servo arm into place, I'm using this servo tester. So I'll plug my servo into there, and by rotating the knob on the servo tester, I can move the arm from side to side. And what I want is for the servo to be in its sort of central position sticking straight forward and then um, as I turn the knob it goes from either from side to side like that. 
and what you can do is there's a, there's a button on the servo tester, you press the button on the servo tester, it centers the servo and then you just plug it into place. So now I've got two servos and I need to design myself a, a 3D printed base to screw them onto. So I've sort of got a rough idea of what I want, I've sketched it all up, uh, gone around the outside, done it in pen just because you know it looks nice doesn't it? And then um, I'm going to take the servo itself, measure it up with my pair of calipers and make sure that I know what sort of size it is, transfer those sizes to the sketch and then I'm going to use this sketch as a guide to build an actual base using Fusion 360. So this is in Fusion 360. There's my base, these are the side arms and this is basically a top view of what the whole thing's going to look like. So I'm just sort of constructing all the various different parts. This is the hole that the uh, rear of the head is going to connect to. And I'm just sort of fitting that into position and um, making sure that everything's all lined up properly. So there's the base, top view. And I will now rotate it round and extrude it. Like that, so I've made it sort of five millimeter, thick, five or six millimeters thick, I think, uh, and then rotating it underside so I can grab these pieces on the underside. I'm going to extrude again, like that, and again, like to make the arms, and then that's basically I've made two cradles facing each other that the servo will fit in. Put some holes in for the screws, and that's basically that done. So now that's a case of I need to export that into a format that can be read by the 3D printer. So I send that into Simplify 3D, which is here, and it just drops into place like this, quite satisfying the way it drops onto the baseboard like that. And then I send that out to a SD card, and I plug the SD card into my 3D printer, and there it is. Time lapse of it being made. You can see it takes a while to do, but that you can just leave it while you're having your tea or something like that. And then there's the finished part ready to go and look at that it fits very satisfying when that happens the servo sits into the tray into the little cradles like that a couple of screws secure them into place put the other servo on the other side a couple more screws and then that's the whole that's the base basically assembled and then to join the head onto the servos, what I'm going to do is use cocktail sticks. And they're, they're because they've got tapered ends on them, they make a nice taper fit. You just sort of push them into the connectors like that. And I can move them around. So I sort of jiggle the uh, parts around like that. I'll make them look around. Hello. Make them look from side to side. And we're going to fit the other end of the cocktail sticks, the one to the rear of the board, and then the side ones to the arms of the servo, like that. And then a quick test. Yes, and it works. Oh. And there's the finished result. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to work out how to program the servo so that I can make it tell a story without having to sit and twiddle the knobs myself. Thanks for watching, hope you liked it. Bye!